So I'm doing this as a follow-up video to the one on R and R Studio that you hopefully have already watched. If you already know how to interact with R Studio, you probably didn't watch that one. This one is specifically about if you're having trouble with regards to being able to install or open R Studio in your native OS, whichever one you're using. This again, as I'm talking to you, is on a Linux system. It's going to be very similar to a Macintosh system by way of a lot of different interfaces. And a Windows system is only a little bit of differences, but we're talking about that. In general, if you, everything has a terminal that you can use. In Windows, it's PowerShell is the main one that you can use. You can also install a, a local version of um, Windows subsystem for Linux using something like Ubuntu or something like that, which gives you a Linux terminal to be able to use. You can use the terminal or terminal emulator in Macintosh and just use terminal in the Linux environment. So if I have a terminal, what I have is I have access to my underlying Unix system. That's the same thing for Macintosh. All Macintosh is, is just a fancy overlay of, of Unix, the same as Linux, really. And so you have a lot of different power here. But the thing that we're most interested in is that if I want to use R, I just type capital R, and now I have R. If you don't want to use the terminal, every time you install R, you also install its GUI. In Linux, the GUI doesn't look anything like it does for Mac and PC, but it's basically the same thing. You just have an instance of R that you've opened up. The things that, like I mentioned in the first video, where things get a little bit different is when you're trying to edit source code. And when source code gets much longer, you really want some kind of software where you can identify syntax as you're moving forward. So I'm old school. I like to use Vi or Vim. Vim gives me a nice color-coded system for me to be able to use. I can also uh, move this out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing. I can also set it so that it will spell check for me as I can keep typing. So if I'm writing something in this, I get document a, a proposal or a paper, it actually still recognizes that. You can also use other programs along the way, such as, like I mentioned in the other one, Kate is, I oh, the wrong thing. Um, Kate is a classic example anymore. Um, you can use the basic text editor, anything other than a more complicated word processing system like Microsoft Word or Pages in Macintosh. But as you can see, either way, I still get this syntax, code syntaxing based on whatever my code language is. So I can do a number of different things in each of the, these environments. When you're talking about it from a debugging standpoint, that's where things get this that little bit more challenging. And you just need to know what your environment is. So if I open this up in Kate, which is a decent option for you to be able to use, I have this here and I just want to debug it. I want to see whether or not I hit made the sequence value correct. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it into my terminal. And yes, it works. I can see what test I can see what test looks like. I can view it in a number of different ways. It just depends on how I'm going to try and interface with it. If I have more than one thing, more than one section that I want to run and test, I can select them paste them over here, and then go from there. It's not any different than selecting, highlighting, and then running in RStudio. You're just copying and pasting manually instead. But again, especially if you can't get RStudio to work or just don't want to use it, this is an option. And it's going to work for any environment that you would decide to edit in. I can just come in here. I can copy what's there. I can come over here, and I can test it. One value that we do end up seeing if you do do want to do something well, re well relatively really quite old <laughs> is if you're in a terminal, you can open it up. As long as you're in the same working directory, now I can open up that source code and I'm here in between each one of those and I can pass between. So I can only have one window open. Some people like this for being able to focus on only one thing. I can close out everything else around me and just focus on this one thing that I want to to execute on and get done. Um, it gives me a little bit more leeway to be able to do that if you really want to. That's just another little focus thing that some people have that they may want to use it for. Overall, you have a lot of different options for being able to do it. There are workarounds to be able to actually get R to work in things like Jupyter Notebooks. So if you want to cross between Python and R, that's an advanced stage. We might have a video of that coming up uh, later in iterations of the QMRA4. Um, or uh, later on within the, this institute itself. But that's definitely a more advanced stage to be able to do something like that. Not overtly difficult, but right now we're only learning R in QMRA4. If you want to learn Python along the way as well, 
go ahead and do that. That's a, a growing industry standard as we move forward. But again, as before, looking forward to meeting you and have a great time.